Hey everybody, Jason here again from the D2 with more special coverage of Total Chaos. Up next is an interview with Andre Matos, a 3D artist for Porsche. So make sure to subscribe, we've got a lot of great content coming out in the next few days. Enjoy the interview. Hi guys, welcome back to the D2 channel. My name is Fabio Palvelli. I'm here together with Andre Matos, a... Uh, can I call you card designer? You're not really a card designer. You're no, I don't, like I don't. A... People always congratulate me. Oh man, I saw your last model, it's awesome. <laughs> how did you draw that? But how can I describe your job? Well, my job, it's, it's literally uh, uh, drag and drop cars on the scene <laughs> and make them look pretty. Okay, <laughs> let's make it sound more professional. He's a car visualizer? Uh, <laughs> yeah, can we yeah, say of course, that? Yeah. And you are from? from a place called Azores in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. I like to say it's the tail of Europe. It's part of Portugal, it's a beautiful place. Uh, it's far away from the mainland, it's like two hours by airplane. Uh, and Germans say that the good weather always comes from Azores and it's not a lie. I googled it, it seems like it's in the middle of nowhere. I really want to go there. <laughs> uh, it's like Hawaii in Europe. I would like you to tell me a little bit more about you, how you got started and how did you get into the business of making beautiful car pictures? I was a, a 3D enthusiast and I spent like most part of my, of my life doing it for fun. So there was not really a way to, to grab something in a local market to, to make profit out of that. And uh, the, the market was, was kind of a small place. So the way to, to, to grow as a professional was to, to move on, you know, leave my, my place. And so I moved out to Germany. And in Germany, I started working as a, as a motion designer for, for Porsche car visualization. You're completely self-taught, right? You did not do some courses or went to university for this no, kind of stuff? No, nothing. I think like the, the way to go, it's to, to use always Professor Google. You know, if you want to build a pipeline by yourself, you need to be able to, to create your own thing and, and judge by yourself what you, what you want to do or not. If you, if you get somebody as a mentor or something, you will always chase the, the person. And How not. long have you been doing this? Ooh, okay, tricky. Another tricky question. I will say that that in my entire life I did a lot of things. You know, I did I did uh, a lot of graphic design. I did uh, web design. I did flash. I did After Effects. I did a lot of things in the past. But 3D was always the passion. So I always did like side projects uh, that are related to 3D Studio Max. And I was actually going going to the focus of the question: How? Right? I start I start by using V-Ray. Uh, since the beginning and when V-Ray launched the uh, V-Ray GPU, in this case RT, uh, I thought it was like super easy to set it up scenes. Uh, and this was actually like a good idea because when I moved out to Germany, working as a motion designer, not doing anything in 3D for, the, for, for big main LEDs in car exhibitions because that's actually what I'm doing, I saw a chance. Why? Because of, of farming, random farms, they are super expensive so they had to grab super massive, insanely big, uh, pixel mapping renders and this was too expensive for them you know and I had my workstation with four GPUs on that time they were like 780 Ti's and I saw a chance to start sneaking in into the industry so I started doing like small renders small things and then I started getting more responsibility and more responsibility more pressure but I was actually able to feed everything because of the GPU rendering so basically you took the production of car renderings into your office by yourself it wasn't something that the company was already producing they were doing it but really small projects because of the of the of the cost of farming because like it's like it's like below the line communication so what they do it's like the communication that we are doing it happens like for two weeks in car exhibitions and then it's gone they don't use it for anything else so uh and the the thing it's like uh, they couldn't afford i mean they obviously could afford but it's quite expensive yeah, to do like for two weeks below the line communication and with GPU rendering, come on, man, it's just like one workstation with four GPUs and you're able to output whatever you want. So with time, we start growing and building our own farms. And right now, I will say that it was a good idea, but it was a bad idea because you work a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. When you have a lot of power, you yeah, have you, to use the power. Yeah, you're able to output whatever people are asking. There's no excuses to say oh, it's going to be rendering for a while. <laughs> no, no, it's going to be rendering fast. Let me thanks tell to you. these guys over <laughs> Then, here. Thanks to the chaos people. <laughs> Uh, so, you've been trying so many different things and then you go into the car industry making visualization. This is to me like uh, 
it's amazing because you know I know a lot of uh, people that come from the architecture of visualization industry which I don't know do you have any experience about architecture visualization well I think that once you jump into the architecture world uh, uh, you, you need to have a passion for architecture and overall statics about about uh, I mean if you if you're a graphic designer and if you're interested in doing buildings you just basically exchange knowledge from one thing to the other one, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you, you create your own style, and I, I always had a passion for architecture, so that's why I do a lot of architectural visualization regarding things that you just build out of nothing, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. So, and regarding Porsche, I'm doing car visualization, but I also need to build the environments according to the car, so they give you a briefing. They want to have a, like an urban feeling. You need to build something that looks like urban, you know? If they want to have like a, a lab style, you need to, to build something that looks like a lab, high-tech feeling, but at the same time clean for the car. This is amazing. And the this fact is, that yeah, you, know, you become so flexible, right? Yeah, and it's, it's, it's the, the funniest part is actually to build architecture because doing the car itself, it's just drag and drop shaders. Yeah. In this case, V-Ray scans, Chaos Group, <laughs> uh, all the time. This is not a sponsored video, by the way, okay? So no, no, I mean, we, they <laughs> have awesome Just to make products. sure that we're not trying to sell anything Chaos related, it's just that, uh, you know, I find it also myself, when you have a good product, you, you're happy about it because you know that you can use the possibilities to achieve the goals that you're trying to achieve which I think it's uh, sometimes a, an understatement because you know, very often users get frustrated with the companies because they don't deliver what they want. But actually I think that if you're from the industry and you're involved with them and you work together, you get a great feedback and you get a cooperation as well. Oh, the team is awesome, you know. Like uh, for me it's an honor to be here because actually it's the first time that I'm meeting personally. Mm -hmm. We had the chance to exchange several emails and, and, and I'm on the, on the nightly builds group. Uh, and over the last, last I, will, I will say two years, you know, when I jump into this program, I had several funny situations. Uh, I had one situation and, and this story, I, I, I think it's quite interesting because because they are a big company, you know, they have big customers, but they, but they also care about, about small customers or like a guy like me, one single guy. And what happened was like I broke my arms during the production of uh, IAA, like a big car exhibition, and I had eight cars shaded with V-Ray scans, a nightly build that they always tell you, okay, you go on production with this, but it's your responsibility yeah, yeah. if we don't support a feature anymore. Mm -hmm. And what happened was like I, I, I came back to the office after recovering from from the surgeries and and I start like working back into the projects with a deadline of two months and the scans were not supported anymore. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they thought, okay, we cannot finish on time, so we're gonna not support this on the next release, on this case, V-Ray 3.6. Mm -hmm. uh, and I start panicking, you know, I had such a rough deadline, I have everything shaded with scans and I talked to, to Blago and I thought like, oh, I'm, I'm screwed. I mean, there's no way this guy's gonna, gonna solve my, my problem from now on. Mm -hmm. They did a build <laughs> in two days with V-Ray scans completely working for me, man. Just for you. It's insane, you know? <laughs> That's why you jump into production with these guys, nothing can go wrong. It's like they, they will always keep your back. It's an amazing crew, you know? I'm not being paid by them. That's not the <laughs> point. Nobody's paying nothing. And uh, they're awesome people, seriously. Let oh. me ask you now, you touched up on a lot of industries and you've done a lot of different things. What is one of the things that you think it's peculiar about the car visualization industry? One of the things that makes you that makes you say, "That's why I do it." Uh, I cannot answer to that, que that question anymore because I used to love cars, and right now it's that's not really the <laughs> the case because you get so many cars to shade that it's almost like uh, industrial production, mm -hmm. like do it quick and dirty uh, but still I still love cars you know and when you when you get the job done at the end you feel like okay I accomplished I, I, I must um, you know if I think about it myself I think that one of the things that I would be very excited is to see the latest release of a certain type of car no it's, an, it's, it's awesome you know I had, I had the chance to, to make releases of several cars in the past and you get the, the data previously a lot of months before so you can prepare the visualizations for the car. Uh, and when you see the car standing on stage with all your work behind as a background, uh, it's of course it's an honor. I mean, you feel like I did, I, I'm part of something 
a car industry, right? If you need something big, no, it's not really big, you know. But <laughs> but you always get you get a lot of emotions when when you reach the deadline on time. You see everything running smooth. When you had actually enough time to fine tune everything to make it perfect, you always have with lots of coffee, of course. <laughs> and uh, and coffee yeah. and 3D. Always, man, always. Okay, then let me ask you: of all the cars that you've rendered, which one would you like to own, or w you wish <laughs> to own? <laughs> Ooh, that's a tricky question. I will say I will I will buy. Uh, uh, I wouldn't buy, you know, I don't have money to buy it. I will get the GT2 RS. No, 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 even better. <laughs> I will get the 918, the Spider. Okay. And then I will sell it. And I will buy seven Porsches with different colors for every day of the week. <laughs> <laughs> 911s, of course. No, seven 911s with different colors for every day of the week. Yeah, Porsche are beautiful cars. Yeah, right? I guess so. Yeah, and the sound is quite peculiar. I love car engines. And like, like I will say that uh, Porsche is quite groovy, Ferrari. It's like this high frequency of the engine, and but my favorite sound is the Maserati. So it looks like a one night stand between a Porsche and a Ferrari. You know, <laughs> like you have the the the, the groovy sound, uh, and you have the high frequency, and you can recognize it far away. Maserati, awesome cars also. Tell me something. If somebody is thinking to get into the uh, uh, car visualization industry. What would you recommend them? Uh, I will recommend them to to work like a Swiss knife. You know, it's not only about rendering the car to make the car look pretty. There's a lot of things that you need to learn before, such as uh, you need to have modeling skills because it doesn't matter if you get the CAD file, like the entire car tessellated from the customer. You need to be able to output things on the scene. Uh, if you love cars and if you have skills regarding regarding modeling. Uh, I wouldn't say really rendering because V-Ray RT it's just literally drag and drop and press render. Mm -hmm. uh, it's quite easy, um, but it's it's I mean it's a it's a one step job that you need to go through. Do a lot of personal projects. So once you jump into the market, you you kick in really hard. Mm -hmm. So people start trusting you instead of just jumping into the market as a rookie. So I, I would I would say like. If you're gonna do something, do it for passion before, and when you're actually comfortable to jump into the market, just jump into the market, and the market will absorb you somehow. So That's you my... see, guys, be patient. Always, always. If you if you love your job, you will succeed. Period. In everything. Andre, I think this is everything. Hey, Fabio, I, I always hope, a pleasure. Uh, I hope people got something out of it. Thank you very much for answering all my questions. <laughs> One of the things that I want to add to this is that you're an incredibly fun person to talk to. You're oh very God, entertaining. On. So I can imagine that, you know, the people that work with you, they also do it because of that, you know, oh, no, you're a character. I'm always right? in a bad mood, <laughs> always in a bad I mood. I don't believe that. No, no I, have my, I have my pauses for coffee, of course. <laughs> but while I'm working, I'm super focused. I don't talk at all. I just grab the headphones and it's straightforward. You have a deadline, you know. <laughs> No, so when I come here, when I came here to Sofia, I came with this spirit. Let's let's have some laugh. <laughs> Guys, thanks a lot for watching. This was Andre Matos, Fabio Palvelli. See you next time.